Hey Vinyl Community, this is going to be a response to a contest that uh, Corey Overkill Vids is running. He's got uh, 300 subscribers and uh, just want to say congratulations on that. But also I want to say I'm really enjoying watching some uh, videos you've been doing in a series lately where you take your camera into various record stores that you're traveling around to and finding. And it really inspired me to uh, think about doing the same whenever I go on trips, see if there's any record stores in the area that I can go into. I never thought of doing that before and I think it might be uh, something to, un to undertake as a goal. Well, your contest is asking us to uh, talk about some of the outstanding concert experiences we've been to, I believe. Um, and I have two uh, different artists. One of them is going to be no surprise. One of them is Paul McCartney. Uh, I've been to uh, many Paul McCartney uh, shows over the last uh, several years, uh, I guess 20 some odd years now. And uh, the one that really stands out would be from 1992. It was a small venue, and it was uh, when Paul was doing the MTV Up Close appearance. It was going to be taped for MTV, and he did two nights. He did one on uh, December 10th of 92, and one on December 11th. I went to the December 10th show, uh, and uh, what's cool about it is I won the tickets on a radio show, which is something that I've tried so many times in my life. I never really was one to win things, obviously. I've never won the lottery, that's why I'm here, sitting here like this. <laughs> um, but uh, you had to call in for uh, several days on the radio show, and you had to try to be a certain number caller, and then you win the tickets. Well, uh, I remember I, I tried many times that week, and uh, the time that I got successful was actually 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, when they when they said to call in, I figured, well, how many people are they going to have 2 o'clock in the morning? I have better odds. Well... They wanted uh, the 25th caller to win, so I called up and uh, the phone was ringing. And uh, when the phone was ringing, I was getting so excited. Oh, you know, I got I might get through, you know, pick up. Well, uh, they tried something different. There were two DJs, and they said, "Well, let, let's let's change the rules a little bit here for this phone call." He said, "How about if what we do is instead of taking the 25th caller, we just take one out of all these blinking lights here on the board at random. Just close our eyes and pick one, and that'll be the winner." And I remember them like toying with people. You mean only one person that we pick up is going to be the winner? Only one of these many blinking lights? And I'm standing there on the phone like this with my fingers crossed. And sure enough, he said, okay, here we go, one, two, three, and he picked one up at random, and I heard the connection, and it was me. So I won tickets to see Paul's show, but what was great about it was that uh, the, the show was at the Ed Sullivan Theater, the same theater the Beatles played in in 1964 on the Sullivan Show, and now it's used as the uh, David Letterman Theater in, uh, in New York. But um, it was exciting, New York City, you know, same theater that the Beatles had been in. Uh, even better, when I got the tickets, I knew they'd probably be good seats, but what, what surprised me was when I got the tickets, on the back, somebody had written specially in Magic Marker, Floor, F-L-O-O-R. I had two tickets, one for me and one for uh, my fiancé, soon-to-be fiancé at that time, uh, was going to be my wife. The two of us, we, uh, we went together, and uh, I remember walking in there, and... I figured the floor seats were going to be great, right? Because it's on the floor, not up in the mezzanine or anything. But to my amazement, what the floor meant was, you know that area when you see the stage in the first row, there's a little gap in there between the stage and the front row? We were supposed to stand with a bunch of other people in that front area. So we didn't even have a seat. We were going to stand, which was fine with me. I was only 30 years old at the time. I could stand for hours. It didn't matter, <laughs> you know. So um, I was thrilled. But well, even better, I was wearing a black jacket, and uh, my girl was wearing a black also. So they, they grabbed hold of us and said, you come to the front here because you're wearing black. Anybody with black, they wanted closer to the front because I guess the, the thinking was that the cameras that were swooping around wouldn't be uh, drowning Paul out with colors, you know, they wanted they wanted dull colors, and black colors in the front, so we just lucked out. And I wound up being right up by the stage, about five, maybe six feet tops, six feet, five or six feet, to Paul's right from the microphone. I mean, how great is that, right? A Beatles fan, a lifelong McCartney fan, and, uh, you know, I had a chance to be that close to him. And I can remember when he sang, I looked up and I, I could see the fillings in his upper teeth as he was singing. Is that amazing? And the best thing was, you know, this this show was being recorded. 
uh, there are bootlegs running around of this show, and I'm in. Luckily, the, the night that really is the one that surfaced as bootleg has me in it. The only thing is, although I have a copy for my collection, you can see the performance on YouTube rather easily, and if you look around. Um, you can't really make out it's me. I know it's me, but the thing is, it's mostly from the back, you know. Paul's on the front of the stage and it's everybody else's backs. And I'm wearing black and I have longer hair at the time. And I'm about 60 pounds lighter than I am now. <laughs> All right? And I'm not, not a tall guy. So, uh, <laughs> bottom line is, I can pick out and say, if, if I show the video, Oh, that, see that? That's me. See that, see that head there in the front? That's my head. And that's my girl behind me. And you can see her in Penny Lane tapping me on the back and to the song, Rhythm. It was just really great. And after you see a show like that, you never go back. You can't, even a front row seat isn't as good as being right up to the stage. I really lucked out. Now, my other story would be uh, Joan Jett. Joan Jett is uh, somebody that, you know, I, I've i always uh, liked. And uh, well, I liked her more in the, it, when I was younger, you know, in my early 20s. But anyway, um, I, I went to, and there's, there's the poster of her back there. The door's not closed, but anyway. Uh, the thing about Joan Jett is, I, I learned early on that she liked fans to come up to the stage. Same situation as with McCartney. And what you would do is, you would buy a ticket, didn't matter what seat you were sitting in, whether you were way up high or whether you were down on the ground. The main thing is you got there early and was one of, one of the first people with your tickets. And then everybody who was in the die-hard core audience knew that the idea was to charge the stage. As soon as you got in, you ran and you charged the stage, you found your spot on the stage. and secured your space. You had to wait one or two hours before the show started. But uh, when Joan came out and thundered that rock and roll and st stomped on the stage, she was right there. I mean, she sweat on me. Uh, I, I went to several shows like that, getting up front like that. Um, I mean, she had a run in March of 1989 in New York City at the Lundfontein Theater on uh, Broadway. And I was at, uh, I don't know if it was two or three of those shows. I forget how many I went to. But anyway, and I remember her hair hanging down, you know, she shook her hair and, you, and it's in my face, you know, when he, you're getting sweat on by Joan Jett and her hair's hitting you in the face. And she's talking, saying personal things to you in the front row there. And again, after you see a show like that, you can never go back and sit down again. And, you know, you can feel the, the energy, you can feel the, the thunder on the stage. It's a, it's a terrific rock experience. And on one of these shows, the guitarist, Ricky Bird, at the end of the show, took his guitar pick and threw it out. I just put my hand up instinctively and caught the pick and I have it somewhere. I should have had it ready for the uh, video. And that's it. Well, I, yeah, I spent all my time already here telling the story. So, many more uh, subscribers to you, Corey. Thanks a lot for the opportunity to tell my stories.